Welcome to Creating Connections Podcast, episode 142. I am Mitch Taylor. And I'm Vicki Musney. And today we're going to talk about what do you do if you get a bad review? Ouch. What do you think a bad review is? Mm hmm. And is there a difference <laughs> between a bad review, a glowing review, or someone's rubber stamp? Hmm. Which would you rather have? More after the break. That was nice and easy. What are you talking about? This also speaks to a much bigger issue. Providing personal solutions through understanding people. This is the Creating Connections Podcast with Gittimer Certified Advisor Mitch Taylor and Certified Personality Trainer Vicki Musney. Welcome back to Creating Connections Podcast, episode 142. I am Mitch. And I'm Vicki. And what constitutes a bad review? Now, recently and in Sales for Event Pros, uh, our friend Michael posted about a bad review he received. Vicki, did you think that was a bad review? What was it, like a 4.4, something like that? Yeah, 4.4. Yeah, 4.4, that's what I thought. Um, no, I, I can see how easy it is to feel like that because we, we, our natural tendency is to want to have all five-star reviews. But 4.4, first of all, I don't think that's that bad. No. And, you know, and Mitch, I see this all the time, not just even in the business review sense, but the conferences that we speak at and I see people rating, you know, different presenters and different sessions they've been to and just in general, you know, even aside from restaurant reviews and stuff, I think people have this idea that, oh yeah, I'll just put, it was, if it was, if it was good, I should just give them a five. I should just do the top one just to be nice. Um, but if everybody's just doing that, then does that rating system or those reviews, do they actually stop being as helpful? Right. Do they reflect truly what you provided? Well, and I think it goes back to what's the point of asking for a review. Um, I don't know. This, this conversation on Facebook, it took a, an interesting turn. So here's the thing. It, we, we started off by saying, what do you do if you get a bad review? So let's answer that question. That was the original question. First. <laughs> well, and then I think the natural reaction was, though, we have to define, is this a bad review? Correct. And in this So case, it may not be perfect, but it still wasn't bad. There was nothing that was slammed. There were no yeah. zeros or ones or... We, yeah, we recently got a not so good review here of one of our MCs. And we called the client, we chatted about it, we had a discussion. Mm -hmm. There was a ball or two dropped. Now, regardless of how perfect we strive for, we are only human, you're only yep. human. <laughs> and I'm not saying that as an excuse to let you slack, because you shouldn't. Mm -hmm. That's not the point. The point is you strive for success every time out. Shoot for but the moon, Mitch, you'll land among the stars. So my question to you then with that recent example, and when you called the client, mm -hmm. what was the purpose of your call? Was it to find out why, or was it to ask them to change the review, or what were you looking for? It was to find for? out why. It was to find out where we went wrong. And I think and, that's a good response. I think the temptation yeah. is to well, how do I get them to change it? And I think that's kind of a wrong yeah, or selfish should, approach, you know, really. Unless it's a case of it's an untruthful review. Which is a different situation, I think. And we've had those too. We had an interesting one for our business about a month or so ago. And um, turns out it was posted on Facebook and shortly thereafter it was deleted because they had posted it from a fake profile so we got off easy because we could look at it and go that's ridiculous that didn't happen you know what is going on here and in our case it sort of resolved itself although my first reaction was to send a direct facebook message to that person um and that's how we realized that the profile was deleted and not that again, long after I think it's all, it totally goes back to 
the relationship you mm -hmm. have with your clients. Yeah. And don't sit here and give yourself the verbal and say, I have a great relationship with all of my clients. Yeah. No, you don't. You have some, let's be honest. Again, as I said on a <laughs> live at 75, not that long ago, let go of your ego, you know, and actually, you know, set aside the ego and say, really, how do, how good of a relationship do I have? How could I better that relationship? And this is something that I'm excited about because we're going to have this topic covered. I'm not going to say with who, and I'm not going to say uh, more details than that. We're going to have this topic mm -hmm. covered upcoming at Midwest DJs Live. So if you're listening to this and watching this podcast, definitely get your tickets for that. Ooh. But I, I, sorry, I, I'm kind of stretching here um, or going off topic. <laughs> but the, the point you do that is from time to time. I do that from time to time. The point is, is that how good of a relationship do you have with your client? If you have a good relationship with your client, then more often than not, they'll contact you first before they blast you on the internet. Mm -hmm. When you get blasted on the internet, guess what? You don't have a relationship with your client because if they cared about you, they'd contact you privately. Yep. And a 4.4 is not being blasted. No. So don't beat yourself up. I don't know the situation, but if you were, if you are a natural perfectionist or you were raised by perfectionist parents and you've got all of these scars from childhood where you didn't get an A on everything, just relax. It's okay. So you get a B once in a while. It's still above average. You know, in most of those rating systems, it still says great or very good or something positive. So don't put yourself up. If it truly is a bad review, then I think you do need to find out why. Yeah. Where did you drop the ball? Um, and that's why I loved, I'm going to get into the specifics of this. Okay. In, the, in the comments, Dave Turnier, who we've talked about before and had on the show before several times, but he asked a really brilliant question because he said, are we looking for reviews or are we looking for endorsements? Because I think in general, when we go ask for a review, what we really are wanting is endorsement. We're asking someone to go publicly and say that we're great. I mean, let's be honest, isn't that what we're really looking for? Mm -hmm. um, but now if a, a true review, if the spirit of it is to get feedback, then maybe you don't want to ask for that publicly. And, um, and that's a different, yes. you know, different it's level of questioning. And I think you guys do a good job of that. Yeah, we send out our survey and our survey is designed to get a, it's a review, but it's really feedback. That's what your survey should give you mm -hmm. is feedback. The review sites just, you know, and here's the other thing. Maybe you are sitting here and I want you to think about this for other businesses. Go actually look at the reviews of other businesses. Mm -hmm. What specific details can you pull out? So for entertainment, for example, are they just speaking, oh, he played great music or the flowers are beautiful? Okay, are you looking at how the flowers were designed <laughs> and arranged and specifically placed in a certain way to make that arrangement more beautiful, to make the mm -hmm. flower that you chose specifically to be your number one choice stand out? Because I think Is product reviews. Highlighting, right are different than service reviews. I think that's what you're getting at, yeah. Yeah, and specifically, I wanna go back to the actual human behind the product or service. Mm -hmm. And you wanna look at the care that's being given. So if it's just, uh, he played great music and we had fun, uh, yeah. not as descriptive or great as, oh my goodness, the attention to detail not nothing was missed everyone was informed we knew what was going on he took all the stress completely away mm -hmm. from us that's a that's a completely different review yeah absolutely we're probably talking about two completely different price points as well that's a different topic though Mitch. that doesn't well <laughs> that, but it is it isn't because <laughs> that review the first review i described is at one price point mm -hmm. and the next review is at a different price point usually yes so you want to you know, realize that it's not all created equal. 
And when people yeah. sit on boards, for example, on your local Facebook community group for, you know, wedding resale or whatever, and they say, oh, this person was great and that person was great, you're not getting the full, you know, picture of why. Mm -hmm. And are we seeking endorsements versus reviews? I think you want glowing endorsements. Yeah, absolutely. But you also want to get that private review or that private feedback about how you did. Well, and I think there is something too, though, Mitch, that every now and then getting a 4.4 review is not a terrible thing. Agreed. And I think, and even if you get, I've looked at some places where they have a bunch of, you know, really high, good fours and fives, and there'll be like just a couple of zeros or ones or whatever that particular rating system is. Yeah. And it makes me go, okay, either that client was just being, you know, a real jerk or having a bad day or that company had an off day, but I'm not gonna dismiss something just over one or two bad reviews Correct. out of a whole bunch of good ones. Correct. So, um, and, I, and I know that this, is, behind, this is how I shop. This is how, how I rate things. Yeah, that's the other thing. If they're all, if they're all perfect, that kind of makes me go, oh, did they just get their friends to go and post some reviews? <laughs> yeah. Or are these real? Because, I know, like you said, we're all human and most humans can't be perfect 100% right. at a time. Exactly. So having a couple of them that say something a little bit different is not a bad thing. I wouldn't no, freak out. Not at all. Um, I probably, honestly, at a 4.4, I don't even think I would respond publicly. I wouldn't no. comment like if it was a Facebook or whatever. Not at all. Um, I would probably just, you know, use my usual follow-up to ask if there's anything that we could do to improve services for yeah, the next I, time. Yeah, I'd make a phone call, absolutely. Um, but I wouldn't stress over it. So no. I guess you know, using the one example that was posted um, last month in Sales for Event Pros, don't freak out about a 4.4. If you actually get a true bad review, mm -hmm. then you have to decide, is it founded or unfounded? And how can you handle that? Is it worth making a comment? You know, thank you for your feedback. We are working I, I would on addressing reach out this. And have, a, have a conversation right away. Mm -hmm. My opinion. But you can also, I think on some platforms comment publicly. And yes. just give something as simple as, you know, thank you for letting us know about this issue. We're working to resolve it so that anybody else that were to read it would at least see right. you're addressing it, you know, or yes. we're fine. We're looking into the matter to try to find out what happened mm -hmm. or we're looking for more details or something. Um, Those are our so thoughts. People, yeah. But don't, don't freak out, especially if it's just one. That's my bottom line. Yeah. Don't freak out, especially if it's one. Find out, have the relationship, build a relationship, <clears throat> make the phone call, find out how you can help. Uh, that's it for today's episode, episode 142. I am Mitch Taylor. Thanks so much and for I'm, listening and watching. Oh, Sorry. That's okay. I'm Vicki Misney, and I also appreciate you listening and watching. Thank you. <laughs> uh, this is Creating Connections, providing personal solutions through understanding people. We'll see you next time. Have a good week. Thank you for listening to the Creating Connections podcast with Gittimer Certified Advisor Mitch Taylor and Certified Personality Trainer Vicki Musney. For more information on providing personal solutions through understanding people better, visit creatingconnections.biz.